Hi, welcome and thank you all for coming out. It is a pleasure to see all of you and a pleasure to see all of the youth who participated in this, this year's Paint Phoenix Purple Youth Art Contest. So first of all, I want to give a round of applause to all of our artists who participated. So my name is Bree Rodriguez and I've probably been in communication with a lot of you and I am a community initiative specialist and I oversee the youth and education component of our Paint Phoenix Purple campaign, which is our domestic violence awareness campaign. So I have a couple of guest speakers this um, evening that I will be introducing you to that will give you a little bit more information and history of our Paint Phoenix Purple campaign. The first person I would like to introduce is our Human Services Director, Ms. Marcelle Franklin. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Oh boy, this makes my voice sound really like the voice of God. <laughs> well, this is impressive. Uh, but good afternoon. Welcome to your city hall, obviously. And we are so excited uh, as the Human Services Department to provide leadership under the direction of our mayor and city council for our wonderful paint, Phoenix Purple campaign. Um, you know, for me, as we talk about and recognize the month of October for domestic violence awareness, it's very personal for me, so I've experienced it both um, from my mother's sister who passed away at the hands of her abuser, uh, as well as myself. So it, it, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be in front of you all. Um, Uh-oh, did I do that? Oh, boy. Now this is God telling me don't be speaking like you, God. Um, <laughs> It's not what I was doing, Lord, not at all. Uh, but anyways, very excited. Um, there is great work that is going on in our community around this initiative. And those of you that are here with us today, especially our youth who have expressed um, your skills and talents and passion and emotions behind um, what is a very important topic. I'm excited by what I've seen. Uh, I'm excited to be able to uh, let us announce who the winners are. But really, I want to thank the youth that are here for your commitment to speaking a truth, your commitment to addressing uh, and, and, and really reflecting upon an issue that um, is difficult to talk about, but it's necessary. And when we bring exposure to it, that can help bring healing. When we bring exposure to it, that can help people, both the persons who are victim as well as the abusers, quite honestly, um, that we also need to work on how we create heal and wholeness for them as well. So uh, I end my comments with one as a City of Phoenix, uh, as a Human Services Department Director, uh, truly honored and privileged as a department that we um, have the privilege of being able to lead this particular initiative. We will continue to do that with a heart and a passion. Uh, I don't know if it's on the agenda, so if I'm moving things out of order, um, Bree and Sergio, if you would just raise your hands, both of you all, real quickly before I take the, the privilege of introducing the council members, if you would come forth really, really quickly. I just want to publicly thank uh, Bree Rodriguez and Sergio uh, Gomez, who are on our team, who take the leadership in our paint, paint Phoenix Purple. And if you would please give them a hand clap. Um, Yes, we get paid for doing this, but I hope you can appreciate that you can't be an effective city employee if you don't have a heart for serving people. And these two genuinely have a heart for serving. They have a heart for this initiative. They have a heart for ensuring that we bring awareness to issues surrounding domestic violence. So I want to thank you both for all you do and continue to do. And with that, why don't I stand up here? I get the privilege and honor of introducing the next person who's coming up. She is one of our newest council members, very longtime supporter and community activist. Uh, for the least of these in our community, if you will. Uh, she's done amazing things since she's come in her in her official elected role, but she also did amazing work when she was here on the staff side, if you will, uh, with the city of Phoenix. Again, longtime community member, comes from roots where she knows what it's like maybe to be um, those who may be considered the least of these. So it is my honor and my privilege to introduce to you one of our newest council members, Councilwoman Vanya Guevara. Please welcome her. Thank you so much. Hi, good evening everyone. I want to just especially thank the youth. Um, it's very important that you're involved, you're engaged, especially like Marshall said, this is your city hall. This public facility, this building is yours for many reasons and I want you all to make sure you feel that it's accessible. If you want to visit uh, a city council office, please contact my office. Um, you're more than welcome and I just want to make sure that 
real change I know starts with you and the fact that you're engaged in, in, in public art and, and just being involved is such a key part of community involvement and truly does make a difference. Um, so this program, this is the uh, city's sixth year of the Paint Phoenix Purple campaign. The campaign is designed to raise awareness, educate and provide community with resources related to domestic violence. We engage our youth in the Paint Phoenix Purple campaign through high school resource fairs, uh, purple out games, um, and through the youth that, uh, through an art contest. Like I said, this is the city's sixth year of the youth art contest. Uh, every year we do a call for artwork to all city Phoenix high school youth to participate in the contest. We reach out to community partners and high schools for their participation. This year we had 11 participants from five local high schools. So thank you so much for participating and I encourage you to also get involved um, beyond the contest. If there's a certain air issue area that you care about that you wanna be involved with, please reach out to my office. I wanna uh, provide internships. That's how I got started. I interned for my congresswoman when I was in high school and she inspired me to one day be in the role that I'm in now. So if I could help facilitate that for you, um, please contact me. I'm really, really passionate about um, young people being involved in however, whatever capacity. So thank you for being here. It's an honor and a privilege, and uh, I hope to see you continue to be involved beyond um, this campaign. Thank you again. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman. So next on our agenda, I'm gonna, we, as you've seen here, we have two resource tables, and these are two of our agencies, community partners that provide services to families and youth that may be experiencing domestic violence. Our first, um, so I'm gonna have each one come up, and talk a little bit about the services they do within the community. Our first um, organization we're gonna introduce is an internal organization called the Family Advocacy Center. And so I'm gonna let them come up and they can talk a little bit about the services they provide. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Cano and I am a victim advocate for the Phoenix Family Advocacy Center. Excuse my nerves, I was not prepared to speak today. Uh, but I'm here representing, like I said, the Phoenix Family Advocacy Center and our Victim Services Division within the City of Phoenix. And what we do is we provide victim services to adult victims of domestic violence, um, as well as young adults and sexual violence. Sorry, here we go. can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> so just in case everyone didn't catch that, what we do is we provide victim services to adult and young adult victims of domestic violence, sexual violence, and human trafficking. Um, we provide those services on a walk-in basis, um, and we also take referrals from Crisis Response and from Phoenix PD. Um, we do provide services in Spanish, and we have three advocates that are at satellite locations, so we have one at the Phoenix Municipal Court, we have one in our John F. Long Phoenix Family Service Center, and we have another one who is specific to victims of human trafficking. Um, so that's a very brief summary of what we do, um, but we're able to provide resources and information, specifically safety planning for anyone who may be in need of those services. Okay. Thank you. And our next um, presenter that we're gonna have, I'm there with the Mexican Consulate, Mexican Consulate, and they've been a great partner with us. And so I'm gonna have them come up and speak about the services they provide to our families. Good afternoon, everybody. Oops, hi already. Um, I'm Lilian Cordova. I'm in charge of the Protection and Legal Affairs Department at the Consulate. Um, we are here very happy. I commend the, the City of Phoenix for these efforts that uh, happen year after year. They are a very valuable partner for us at the Consulate. We, besides the traditional services that you probably know the consulates provide, like issuing passports or consular IDs, we also have our department, the Protection and Legal Affairs Department, that takes care of the interaction of Mexican nationals here in the state of Arizona, in this case in the Phoenix area, um, with authorities or with other instances here in which we can probably guide them uh, through the processes or offer certain services in, 
issues just like labor or um, immigration issues or civil issues, very, very varied uh, situations that they may face. One of our very um, important concerns at the consulate is domestic violence. A phen uh, it's a phenomenon that we see very often in our community, unfortunately. So we're very happy to participate in activities like the ones that are held in the state and the city government uh, all month long. We're gonna have our own uh, week against domestic violence from uh, October 22nd to the 26th. And we do more or less the same uh, activities. We provide education, uh, resources, information about uh, services for victims and their families. And in certain cases, we can also provide legal representation for people that qualify through our programs. We invite you to join the, the consulate's activities. We normally post um, the calendar in our social media or you can go to our website. And we can, um, we're very happy to, the city of Phoenix is one of our, our important partners in this effort, so we're very happy to be collaborating with them. I'm very happy to see the response of, of the community and the city of Phoenix. Thank you. So before we get started with the award presentation, um, I want to touch a little bit about um, what Councilwoman, Councilwoman already discussed about what the youth and education component means. We actively go out in the community during Domestic Violence Awareness Month, but we also do it during Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month during the month of February. And in the month of um, April, we go out and talk about healthy teen dating as well. So it encompasses everything. We want to make sure our youth have the information and the resources, and we are here to help. And we do a lot of this by going out into the communities. We do community fairs. We go into the high schools, do resource fairs during the lunch hours, and we have Luckily, we have 26 community partners that actually work with our youth and education work group. And all these community partners are from academia or nonprofit organizations, but they all work to better our youth, to empower them, and to give them those resources to make sure they succeed and are able to go on with their lives, whether it's college, work, whatever it is, we just wanna make sure that they have those resources available. And one of them is having healthy relationships. Doesn't have to be just a romantic relationship, but just healthy, having healthy relationships, how to establish those boundaries, and providing those support and services. Out of all the resources that we've done and the awareness and the outreach we've done, we have um, had the incident of where there's been disclosures from some of our youth of some of the experiences, unfortunate experiences they've encountered in their home with themselves or with family related to domestic violence. So out of that, we would be doing a disservice of providing all this awareness, but not providing a service for that. So what we did is we partnered with Phoenix Union High School and some other districts. And so they're able to do a direct referral to myself for any student or immediate family member of that student who has been or is currently a victim of domestic violence and finds himself needing some services to victim advocacy. So with that referral, it allows us to partner with our Family Advocacy Center, with Chicano Escuela Causa and New Life Center out in the West Valley, and a victim advocate can go to the school and provide those services on site or meet that victim or their family in their community to provide those services. And we wanna make sure that they have all the support and resources and empowerment that they need. So that's one of the good things that's come out of that, and that's a pilot project that we just started this year, so we're very excited about that. So now we're gonna start with the presentation of awards. So I'm not gonna read them in any order. So we're gonna start with the presentation. Before we get to that, all the participants are gonna receive um, a swag bag and all of our participants um, are going to receive four tickets to the Phoenix Suns game this evening. So the way our agenda is, and I kind of sent that out in the email, at six o'clock we're gonna do a walk against domestic violence from here over to the arena. And the Phoenix Suns is sponsoring our domestic violence awareness game tonight. So we're really excited about that. And again, that's been the sixth year that the Phoenix Suns have partnered with us with that. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so our first participant is going to be Vanessa Carillo.
Okay, our next participant is Natalia Buchanan. And if the participants aren't present, we're gonna go ahead and get, make sure they get their certificates and their swag bag as well. Our next participant is Oshmani Nikki. Our next participant is Angelina Morata. Our next participant is Andrea Bueno. Our next participant is Alexis Martinez. Okay. So now we're going to Our next participant is Bobby Mohan. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with our first, second, and third place winners of this year's art contest. So for our third place winner, um, you all will get three tickets to the suite for tonight's game. Uh, third place winner will receive $75, a swag bag, and also we have a Bluetooth um, boom box for you guys as well that will get to you. So our third place winner is Gavin Richards. Our second place winner um, will receive $150 along with the other prizes as well. And our second place winner, winner is Raul De La Rosa. So he's probably not here or it's not going to make it. So that was his drawing. So our first place winner, $300 cash prize, along with the other um, prizes as well. And this year's winner is Amanda Phillips. to do is for our first, second, and third place winners, if you all don't mind coming up and just telling the audience what inspired you with your art, for you, art piece, okay? We'll start with Gavin. Uh, I just really enjoy art. When I get the opportunity, I love participating, and it's great when there's a cause behind it. Even though I only had a weekend to meet the deadline, I... Uh, 
I really enjoyed spending that weekend and getting the work done and making something that the community enjoys. Amanda? Um, for me as well, I also really like just art and being creative and expressing myself through art and I love painting and I thought it was a cool opportunity to do this contest. So before we conclude, I do have one um, special person that I would like to acknowledge, and that is a teacher, an art teacher, who actually pushed this out to her students and ensured we had five entries from her school alone, from Greenwind High School. So I would like to introduce to everyone and have Michelle Benson come up front so we can give her a little certificate for Greenwind High School and also one of our swag bags as well. Thank you. So it's teachers like Michelle that ensure that we're able to provide the services in our high schools that get our youth active and want to participate in events like this. And it really is an honor to be able to work with teachers that provide that support and encouragement for our program, but also for your youth and encourage and empower them. So again, Michelle, thank you so much for your contribution.